Good morning to you. Welcome. Today's topic is come and taste. Come and taste. The reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 to 10. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2 to 10. Let me read. Like newborn infants, for long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by man, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honour is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who call you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. People are commonly looking for the dreams and the desires. What are these? Generally, Wealth and riches, fame and name, position and title, power and authority. Everywhere people, you go, they'll talk about these things and the newspapers are highlighting these things and especially when we heard about Michelle Yeoh, we heard about title and it is so great, everybody is so happy. This is nothing bad. It is the dream and their desires. And many people dream that they can be millionaires. And many people dream that they can be famous. And some dream that they have to be in certain position. Some dream to be in authority. But if you let it come by itself, then it's well and good. But if you do in such a way, we try to uh, engineer it and try to get the back door, then these are things that people frown upon. Because these things can grip us and we can be sold into these things. And unfortunately, many people have been sold. Are these yours too? Are you looking for these things too? What about health and joy, emotion and comfort, spiritual health and security? Are these not people not looking for? Yes, they are. Many people who say that when they are young, they will hunt to reach the world. They want to win the world. When they grow older, they say that I, I want to win my country. And they grow older, then they say, I want to win my family. And the older you go, they say, I want to win myself, over myself. And finally, they say, I want to win over my legs, my body, my mind. And further, they say, I just want to win over my stomach and to have health and joy. 
Don't wait until we are very old, then we are looking for this health and joy. We, are, we should be having it now and preparing it for long term. Our emotion health must be in good order. Otherwise, we will be good in everything but poor in emotion health. We want, we should be looking also for comfort. Don't wait until people comfort you. We can should start comforting others that the comfort that we receive will go to others. What about spiritual health? Many people didn't think of it until they say, let me, until I retire, then I'll think about God, then I'll think about church, then I'll think about the future. <laughs> So they say there are too many things in this world to really bother. But we can do both together. We can think of the spiritual health now, because the spiritual health, what is in good order, is just like our body, we have bodily health, is in good order. We can go long term. We, have, we can be having a long haul. Spiritual health is a long haul. Why wait until last moment when we don't even have enough time? By the time when we want to say something, too late. Too late. Because we don't know our time. What about security? We're not talking about financial security. We're talking about spiritual security. Are you secure? Let it be not disturb our mind and our emotion and not disturb our health and not disturb our body but it is a spiritual security that we are so confident we know where we are heading what we are doing and where we are ending where we will be ending the bible today in 1 peter 2 tells us those who are not in jesus christ it tells us two group of people. One group are those who are not in Jesus Christ and those the other group is those who are in Jesus Christ. Those who are not in Jesus Christ, he says in verse 7, for those who do not believe, they will be like a stone of stumbling, a stumbling block or the rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word of God or they don't have the word of God. And those who are not in Jesus Christ, they will consider once you were not a people, not God's people, once you have not received mercy. You have not received mercy. Pity are those who really have cannot receive God's mercy. God's mercy is so rich so great, so extensive. But those in Jesus Christ, he says they are like newborn infants and they have tasted that the Lord is good. They are a spiritual house, a royal priesthood, and spiritual sacrifices accepted to God. They have this all this metaphor to refer. He says you are like a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. And you are like a cornerstone chosen and precious. And because whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. The honor is for you who believe. The stone that the reject the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, the capstone, or the headstone. The, the prime and those who are in Jesus Christ are considered a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation a people of, for his own possession and they are called out of darkness into his marvelous light and they are God's people and have received God's mercy On one hand, we have people who do not have Jesus. He says, without Jesus, I repeat, he says, this passage says, it will be like a stumbling block 
a rock of offense, not a people of God, not receive mercy. But on the other hand, maybe if you have Jesus, he says you are born again spiritually, you tasted the goodness of God, you are royal priesthood, you are holy nation, you are acceptable to God and become God's people, you receive mercy from God, and you, you are the cornerstone or the capstone. And honor, you have honor and not rejected. And you are out of darkness into light. So that see the difference, see the privilege. One without Jesus, it is rejected by God. One with Jesus is accepted and all the grace of God, everything mercy will come upon you. This is like a worthwhile investment. And if we talk about investment, this is not only a win-win investment, it is a gaining investment, or always win investment. Why do I say that? It is always win. He says, if there is no God, your belief has no effect. Because if you believe that there is no God, your belief has no effect and you have nothing to lose. You go back to your same self, the normal self. But if there, if the God you believe is not true, your belief is, has also no effect and you have not, nothing to lose because the God you believe is not true. But if the God you believe is true, only those who believe will gain. Only those who invest will gain. If the God you believe is true, you have surely hit the jackpot. So what it is trying to say, this investment is not a 50-50 investment. It is a 100% investment. He says, if you invest into it, if you invest in it, believe it, if no, the God is not true or there is no God, you take back everything, nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Just the trial that you have to go. You just, you just have a try. You know, try to invest, the investment, investment trial. But if the God you believe is true, then your investment, he says, will always bring gain. Will not bring loss. It will bring you gain. And if the God is true, we believe is true, it is like you definitely hitting a jackpot. Jackpot of what? Jackpot of spiritual protection, spiritual health, spiritual security that also extends to the physical ex security, physical health and physical, physical uh, protection. It extends that way because the, the spiritual health will begin now until forever. So what is now, you always extend to the physical. So you have nothing to lose, you always gain. So this is the only gaining investment. You can try this investment. Once you invest in it, of course you have to allow it time to see the result. If there is no God, or the God is not true, all your investment is not lost. It's just only the, the period of trial. But then if it is true, you will gain. You will gain more and more and more and more. There are so many things for you to gain. Everything is prepared. Because God say you become his children and you are his you can receive in inheritance. Everything God has is yours. But then of course we have to go to the right way, God's way to do it. Once you have it, doesn't mean that you pump into it everything. Just like a little uh, and often, you know there was two persons for who came into the orphanage and one orphan boy 
was there, he was asked to choose which one do you want, which to be your, your the one who want to uh, adopt you, your adopted father. <laughs> the boy would look at both sides, you know, and finally he chose the one seems outwardly seems not not sure but he invested into it he, he selected him then he and he found out that he's a millionaire so this child is this boy often boy will be the adopted son of the millionaire and this millionaire had no children then his this is his child his child and so he had given the right of access, authority, everything. But of course, when the child has to grow up to a certain stage, then only when the authority was given to him, the power was given to him, and the legacy was given to him. But when we were young, he is guided. Guided all the time. So this is investment, so that it is always there. The investment is given to him. Not, you know, it is because he chose the right. Uh, adopted father. So, what do you do with the, the worthwhile investment? Now, if you've chosen the worthwhile investment, what do you get? What do you do? Here, there's a few scriptures that I'll quote. One scripture says, It's more pleasant to give than to receive. He says, Once you are in, into God's kingdom, into the spiritual realm and in God's child and you have so much it is more blessed to give than to receive but when we are in this world we always want to receive first when you receive means you always felt that you are insufficient you felt that you are deficit you felt that you don't have enough so you must grab 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 but he says that if you are in God's kingdom you have everything. You don't have to feel that you are insecure. You don't have to feel that you have a deficit. You don't have to feel that you don't have enough. You have more than enough. It's now in the kingdom of God. You start to give. More blessed. The more you give, happier you are. The more you give, the, pe the people that you give to, they like it and they are so happy with it. I'm sure you have seen in the WhatsApp message circling around there was a, a rich man where he says he was not happy he thought that he invest and to make a lot of money after making a lot of money he's still not happy now he, then he thought that he built a lot of buildings he built a lot of buildings but still not happy then he thought he buy a lot of arts you know by keep a lot of arts but he keep a lot but still not happy in the end of the day somebody say can you donate some wheelchair to the to the orphanage uh, to the disabled home. He said, yes. And so he, he, he said, you can donate, I can pay for it. So no, 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 no. You donate, you come along and you give to the children. So he went along and brought the wheelchair and give all the wheelchairs to all the people who were there. Everybody was so happy. They were roll around with the wheelchair. They were so happy. And by the time he was to go, one little boy was cat holding to his head leg, he says, yes boy, what do you want? Do you still want something I can get for you? The boy said, no, you come down. So he came down, stood down and looked. He said, I want to see your face clearly. So the boy was holding to him and said, I want to see your face clearly. So he says, so when I go to heaven, I can recognize you. I will thank you in heaven. That man, say that it makes his day he was the most happiest most comforting because he gave and it's more blessed to give than he received and made and built and collect the second thing he says that the bible says that when you are in god you shall lend to many but will borrow from none you will come to the stage that you learn to lend to many and you borrow from none. Why? Because your Father in Heaven has a lot. 
and then that is Deuteronomy 28, chapter 12. Deuteronomy 28, 13 says, you shall always be on the top, never at the bottom. So you don't need to fight for power, authority, position and title. The moment when you are in his kingdom, you follow his way, he will lead you and bring you to the top. He will lead you and bring you to the top, never at the bottom. But on the process, it may take time for God to develop us. But most of the time, we cannot wait, impatient. We want to get there, get there. But it's not God's time yet. So when you get there, you fall down again. You, get, you cannot get there, you fall down again. Then you get discouraged. You know, but you wait for God's time. These things will be yours. You come and taste. Taste this God. Of course, not all, all the time good. Because the period of trial, the period of testing, the period of equipping, the period of training, the period of waiting, sometimes can be difficult, lonely, and boring. But yet, you know that they will bring you to the end, the good result. And that result will bring you all to overcome all the sadness that you have, overcome all the difficulties you have. So this is the way that we are all coming to. The Bible used one illustration. It says like a baby, when you're in the womb, you know, you went through hard time, difficult, nauseating, you know, cannot eat or too heavy, or got so many things, you have to be careful. The moment we go through pain, tough situation, and finally when the baby come out, all that is worthwhile. And it's relief and give thanks, and we see the new life that is your life, new life in this baby. So, my Bible used all this illustration to tell you, you come and taste. The result is always good, but the going through period may be testing. It is only a little while, suffer trial, but then you will see the glory coming. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, I pray for my brothers and sisters to come to you, to come to God and taste God, because some felt so far away from God. Some felt that God has not looked after them. Some felt that their prayers are not answered. But Lord, we pray that let them come back and taste you and let them know that in all things there is a process and that process needs to be churned out. Finally, then we can see the result. And you say you will walk them through the process. You say you will hold them through the process. You say that you, however difficult, you will be there. And you will give them the strength and give them the patience and give them the endurance to walk through the process. And in the end, they will see great results. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you.